Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and this is the third video of the SwiftUI to-do app series, where we're building a to-do app from scratch in SwiftUI, and then we'll be refactoring it to use the combined framework. In this video, we'll do a little refactoring of our code to provide our users with some responsible information should our app not be able to load or store our list of to-dos. I recommend that you watch the previous videos in this series, but if you're just starting here, you can download the completed project from the last video from the link in the notes below. If you enjoy this series, please give the videos a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Make sure you ring the bell to get notified when new videos are released. And I encourage you to leave a comment below. And if you're so inclined, you can support my work by buying me a coffee. I'll leave a link in the notes below. Links to all of the videos in this series are in the description below as well. It's time to do a better job of error handling and presenting relevant and helpful information to the user. In most tutorials, you'll see what we've already done. It prints out the error's localized description to the console. Well, this is of no use to someone running your app on their phone. What I want to do is to present any error to the user with a better explanation. For this, I'm going to create my own error type and provide my cases with their own localized descriptions. Within your models group, create a new file and call it to do error. Inside that file, create an enum of the same name and have it conform to both the error and the localized error protocols. If I switch briefly back now to our file manager plus extension file, I see that there are two cases here where I can create an error. One is when I save and one is when I read. So instead of using a generic error type, I want to use a to do error type instead. And I want to pass back a specific case. So, but before we do that, let's return to the to do error and create those two cases save error and read error. Now returning back to the file manager extension, we can replace our error with a to do error. And this creates some errors. So we'll need to within our completion, specify a particular case of to do error. So in save document, that will be a save error. And in read document, it'll be a read error. Now we also have possibilities for errors in our data store when executing our load and save functions. In load to do's, if we option click on the error in the failure case, we see that it is now a to do error. In the decoding do try catch block, option clicking on the error shows that it's still the generic error type. Similarly, in save to do's, the error in the file manager function is a to do error. But the catch block is the result of an encoding error, and it's still generic. So we have a decoding and an encoding error that we'll need to provide cases for. Back into do error then, let's provide for these two cases. Returning then to data store, in load to do's, within the catch block, we can print out the localized description of a to do error decoding error. In save to do's, we can print out the localized description of a to do error dot encoding error in the catch block. We aren't getting any errors now, but we really haven't done anything yet because we have not yet provided any localized descriptions for our to do error cases. So returning again to to do error, we'll need to create a computed property called error description. That's a string that will return an NS localized string for each case. So let's switch on self and generate all four cases. For the first two cases, if this happens, they're not recoverable. You'll have to tell your users to reinstall the app. So let's return strings here that will tell them that. And unfortunately, the same thing is true for an encoding error. It means you've really done something wrong. And in reality, this should never be the case as your app would have crashed during development. 
so you'd have caught this. But for completeness sake, let's add some text in here. In the decoding error case though, we can recover. And this is the case where the file being saved to the document has somehow been corrupted. And in that case, you can tell the user to create a new to-do, and that will then overwrite the bad example. We're almost there, except that these are strings and not localized strings. So we'll need to wrap these in an NS localized string. Fortunately, this is easy to do because if we select the string and then right click, we can choose refactor and then choose wrap in an NS localized string. So let's do that for each of these strings. The comment here is, is empty, but this is for you to provide your translator with some information should you actually want to localize your app to other languages. Well, so far, all we've done is replace one error type with another, and I, the end user, will never see it because we're still just printing to the console. Well, what I want to do is to present an alert presenting this localized string in the alert message. And I'm going to use the alert method that will respond to the change of an instance of an identifiable object. For that object, I'm going to create a new struct called error type. And for convenience, I'll just create it within the same file. I want to make sure that it conforms to the identifiable object protocol. And it's going to have two properties, an ID, which is required, and I'll just assign it a UUID and an error that will be of type to do error. So back in data store then, I can create a new published property that I'll call app error that will be an optional error type and I'll initialize it as nil. This is what's going to trigger our alert. As soon as we assign a value here, we can have the alert presented. And now everywhere that I print the localized error, instead, I will set the app error to a to-do error that will assign the to-do error to that error property. And there are four places where this will occur. Two here in load to-dos, where the first one, our error is a decoding error. And in the second case of the load to-dos, that error is coming from our file manager, and we've already assigned it that to-do error. In save to-dos, the first error is coming from file manager, so we'll just use the error that we get from the file manager. But in the second one, the error is a result of it being falsely encoded. So we'll use the encoding error. Now then, we can return to content view and display an alert whenever this optional property has been set. Right after where we've called our sheet method, we can now apply the alert modifier. And like sheet, it has two options, one that responds to the changing of a Boolean property, and the other that responds to the setting of an identifiable object, which is our app error. And the content provides us with that actual error. So we can use the error property to present the user with our own custom localized description. So in the content, then we'll use that app error and create an alert that will have a title like OO. And for the message, we'll just use the app error, error localized description. Let's run this one more time then in our simulator and create a new to-do. Now, remember how we placed a print statement when this view is presented? Well, this gives us the location of our stored file in the simulator. So let's copy this path and then go to Finder. And from the Go menu, I can choose Go to Folder. And I'll paste that path into this field and click on Go. And this reveals our Documents folder where I see my JSON file. So I'm going to open it in Xcode to view the JSON and I'm going to change the key of our first object from ID to ID1, and this will invalidate the JSON with respect to our decoder, so we should get an error. So I'll run the app now, 
and we do get that alert telling us to create a new to-do to start over. Well, I'll do that. And it looks like it's saving successfully. So I'll quit and I'll launch again. And it's working. Perfect. We now have a fully functional to-do app with data persistence that reports sensible errors to our users. I'll leave it up to you to improve the UI. In the second section now, we're going to be refactoring our app using the combined framework. See you in the next video.